Uh, given the fact that we are in infrastructure rich zones, not only in Mongolia, but also in the Northwest Territories, we believe we can keep that cost quite low. Uh, the cost of labor in Mongolia is significant. Talking lithium here with Iron Energy and Ali, we've got lithium brine, we've got rock and we've got clay um, with different supporters along the way. So what's your take? What's going to be the place to be? I think having it in all three mediums, of course, helps hedge what we think is going to work at any given point in time. Uh, having a brine asset, of course, lends itself very well to direct lithium extraction, uh, very less um, environmentally intrusive. And that's something that we're seeing some companies come online uh, as of next year. They will be commercially producing uh, brine assets using DLE. From a hard rock perspective, you know, price is very, very sensitive. You've got to ensure that the capex does not... Uh, uh, blow up like it did with the Namaskas of the world way back when. But uh, you've got to make sure that the price controls are in place and, and, and it, it will provide you with significant uh, means to get lithium. And then last but not least on the, the, the clay front, that's something that hasn't been done, but $700 million from GM going into Thacker Pass in uh, Nevada, uh, that, that's an indication that of course, if you deploy capital and technology, you can bring that online. So us having all three mediums, uh, of course, will allow us to be a, a little more competitive uh, when we start to produce or, or when we're at culture production. A bit more of a technical follow-up question on that one. I'm assuming, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that the end product you get out of this lithium resource will be the same price for all the different deposits. But what are, what are we looking at at the cost side? Is there a significant cost difference between these three types of different resources or they're all pretty similar? Well, I would say that uh, your, your brine asset from a DLE perspective is uh, probably a lot less in terms of capex intensity. Uh, you're building a building that's perhaps, you know, uh, a warehouse essentially where you, you have a couple of pumps that bring up the, the brine, you extract the, the lithium from it and then you pump the rest of the water back into the water table. So you're looking about a 250 million capex would be my best guess for what we have at Urgat Naren. Uh, with Baba Yol, we don't know yet. Uh, you know, Thacker Pass receiving 700 million with no other project in the clay space uh, going uh, to production anytime soon. It's one that you cannot speculate on, but I'm sure that they will, and, and we're not sure what that cost will be. And then from a hard rock perspective, uh, you know, you look at the likes of uh, um, other uh, brine, brine or hard rock companies that have gone public uh, or with intentions to, to build a mine. Um, and, and their prices are significantly uh, higher, about 400 million or so uh, gets those things going, uh, at least for, for phase one and two perhaps until they expand production. So the cost does vary depending on the medium, uh, given the fact that we are in infrastructure rich zones, not only in Mongolia, but also in the Northwest Territories, we believe we can keep that cost quite low. Uh, the cost of labor in Mongolia is significantly cheaper than Canada, and so that would aid in, in, in reducing our costs. Uh, and then last but not least, um, there is a means to, to uh, automate or, or use autonomous uh, type systems to, to help uh, deter cost uh, incre increments as well.